What's up everyone, it's Sam from 64 Wheels, back with more diecast, and today we're going to be unboxing and reviewing three incredible team transport sets from Hot Wheels. So, I personally think this is the most stacked release we've gotten in some time. All three releases are excellent. We're getting two new castings in the form of the second story Lori and the flip side hauler over here. And then each casting is double licensed, which is awesome. So that means each car is a real car. It's not a fantasy casting. And then it has a licensed brand on top of it. So as you can see, Mad Mike, Golf, and Liberty Walk on the GTR. So just an absolutely incredible release. These were super hard to find. I only ran into them a single time. Luckily, I found all three at a local Target. Um, they're still priced the same. They're around $15. I know I've unboxed quite a few of these, but I'm probably a release or two behind. I think I have six or nine ugh, um, to unbox that were previous to these, but these are not even the newest ones. I think these are the last of 2023, and then now we're on to 2024. So um, I just wanted to unbox these a, because I think this is the coolest lineup, and the B, I didn't want to wait any longer to try out these new haulers. So let's go ahead and get into it. So for starters, this is 56, 57, and 58. So we are now up to over 60 without the 2024 releases, because when you figure in the Supreme hauler, uh, three Legends Tours, and then the Fast and the Furious one, which I also need to get, um, we're almost at 65, which is kind of, or we are at 65, I think, or very close to that, which is kind of crazy. Um, so the one thing I will say about this line that I don't like is they're hard to store and display because of the larger size. So when you have 60 of these open or eventually opened, if you collect the whole line, it is incredible, incredibly hard to display all these because of the larger size and that they're not all the same. So if they were like, you know, every one of them was this box truck, it might be a little easier, but they're not. This one is a little longer, but it's shorter than this one. This one is a bit, a little bit odder size. Then we have boats and other things mixed in. It's just very difficult um, to store them. So if you have any tips to store them, let me know down in the comments below or link your like display cases that you display them in um, because I have a Carney case and then I have a mass car case I also need to unbox and do a video on. But until then, let's just go ahead and get into these. So let's start with 56. This is, let me make sure my light is over here, um, the Liberty Walk Hauler. Excellent card art on all three of these, uh, by the way. I'm really digging that they're putting a little bit extra work into the card art. It's the very Japanese looking art. It has the cherry blossoms. It has both Liberty Walk cars on it. And I think, I'm not 100% positive, but I think that giant Hot Wheels card cutout is at the actual Liberty Walk headquarters um because I've seen so many pictures on Instagram with the cars behind it I think this is supposed to be at the Liberty Walk headquarters and I in I think Japan um so let me know if I'm correct on that or not but I love the card art either way so I'm gonna go ahead and read this model because it is absolutely ridiculous how long this name is so this is the LB Silhouette GT Nissan 35 GT RR version 2. Like, what, what is going on? I don't, that's such a long name. And then we have the flip side hauler, which is a new hauler I'm pumped about. Uh, just like the name says, the sides flip down, which is a very JDM uh, Japanese style hauler. A lot of the um, like higher end Japanese cars I've seen online on Instagram and stuff are in this type of hauler. So this should be an extra good one. And of course, it's a Liberty Walk, a GTR. It's going to be hype anyway. So very excited about that one. Next up, look at the Carter. Again, that almost looks like old film grain. Do you see that? Like it's a little rainy. It's got like artifacts of film in it. Very cool. They did a great job with this Carter. This truck, the second story lorry, this is also new. It fits in so well with that era of cars. Like I've seen vintage photos uh, from the 60s online where they have, you know, three golf cars. It'll be like three GT40s or something else um, stacked up going to like Le Mans or something. Just an excellent, excellent truck. And then we have the Di Tomasa Pantero Grupo 4. Um, one thing I will complain about this casting uh, the Pantera especially, is I don't think a Pantera in Group 4 was ever golf branded. And I do get a lot of golf fatigue because they put the logo and the branding on everything. Cars that were never even ran in golf, 
like liveries, that's when I don't like them to use it because, they, I mean, Greenlight does it. Anyone who has the golf license just slaps it on everything. And I just get so like, if it's, if it's on like a hauler or whatever, a car, like a GT40 that actually race in a golf livery, I'm for it. But like, I don't need like a Ford Raptor in golf livery or like a Bugatti or something like, I'm just so over it. I don't need that. But the transporter looks cool. And then lastly, we have the Sakura Sprinter, which is a returning truck casting, which is cool. I've unboxed that one before. And then we have the Mad Mike Mazda RX3 GT. So I'm excited to unbox all of these. Very cool. Okay, we'll look at the back so you can see each one there. Da, da, da. There is the barcode for that one if you want. All the licensing on there, which is nice. Um, so let's go ahead and open them in order. So we will do the flip side hauler. I'm so pumped about this. I hate to ruin that nice card art, um, but I don't, obviously, we were talking about displaying these. I don't put these back in the package. I, I sometimes will keep the card, um, but I don't usually put them back in the package. So I like to enjoy them and see them out and kind of play with them and stuff. So cool thing about this one, they did add the little plastic shield here, which is fits nicely over the car. That's probably the biggest plastic shield like protector I've seen in the Hot Wheels line since like the 100% Hot Wheels. That is awesome. Okay, so let's check this thing out and get this and get the car out. So I believe this is the first time we're getting this casting in a premium version. I know it came out probably two years ago. I think it came out in 2021 um, in the main line, but this is cool to get the metal chassis version of this thing. So, or maybe it came out in 2020 because it does have 2020 on the bottom, um, but I don't remember getting a premium version until now. But this one looks pretty good. Uh, we'll take a look at it in a second a little closer. But let's look at the hauler. So nice. Okay. So it does have the little metallic pin. That is a metal base. What does that say? Modern tractor trailer. Okay. Interesting. So it looks like, oh, okay. Let's see. So hang on. Let's look at the, let's, because um, there's a few things I want to look at in this one. So look at the cab. It almost looks cross-eyed there a little bit like it looks like it's staring at you very intently with those headlights uh what was the card art did it look like that like i think they maybe should have added the little like gray background um so it doesn't look like it's staring at you <laughs> because that's a little creepy um but the truck itself is done very well it's got the aero disc all this is metal this whole thing is metal it is very heavy it actually feels a little loose i don't know oh it looks like it didn't get spun all the way maybe because the top of the rivet isn't totally flat. Um, you can kind of see it's a little wobbly there. Probably because this thing is so heavy. Uh, I can't see if there's any detail on the inside. Um, but overall, the detail on the actual like casting of it looks good. So it's got the LB Performance, LB Racing. These are, t what are these, printer tampos? So they come, you can kind of see the artifacting, like the, like the little, what do you call that? Like uh, glittery kind of print style. I don't like those. Um, the yellow has it too, which I think that looks absolutely idiotic that they use that because like that brand in real life, it doesn't like, it doesn't have stripes in it. It doesn't have dots in it. It just should be yellow. Like why there's red artifacts in that, that's embarrassing to me. Um, but besides that, I think this is a good release. I will always complain about these printer style tampos because they're absolute trash, but work like credit where credit is due this is a good casting uh it's designed well look at that that is such an odd that almost looks handwritten on there that date code it's kind of odd but this looks good um so let's go ahead and look at the trailer here so this is really the money maker here so this is the flip side hauler so this should flip up like that oh and they got a little plastic piece in there to kind of keep it popped up so there we go. We can do both sides and look at that. You can see straight through it. That is so cool. Does that have a magnet? Oh, I thought that was a magnet for a second, but it's just the pins for the door. And then this has Liberty Walk on the back. Those are, oh, sorry. Um, those are also, it looks like printer style graphics because there are, are a little bit of orange artifacty stuff in there. Yeah, definitely um, the printer style graphics, but they don't, back, on, back here, they don't look bad. The graphics on the door, um, they have orange in them. So to me, what, what do we like as Hot Wheel collectors, where do we say enough is enough? So we get this excellent casting, this excellent trio of castings, but they all have these terrible tampos on. Them. So 
with prices going up, competition getting worse for Hot Wheels, there's more stuff in the market now than there ever has been. Where do we say we're not spending 15 to $20 on this release and just going up to the $30 to $40 range and getting like the mini GT version that is double the quality and probably double the detail? Like at what point are we going to be like, ah, we got to move on from this or you guys need to correct and get better because I don't want to stop buying Hot Wheels. I love this. I love this line. But when there's stuff on the market that's much better for not a ton more price when these are already kind of pricey, it makes you rethink or at least look at the market and see what's out there. I still think this is an excellent, excellent release. You're still getting this retail. You can't get mini GTs or tarmac or whatever um, retail because I think if you did... Hot Wheels would really be in trouble with stuff like this because of the graphics. Um, I don't think people will ever give up buying Hot Wheels, but I think if you put the two side by side in a very similar price range, that th this these would be in trouble. But overall, as a release, this looks great. So let's go ahead and look at the car. Uh, the car suffers from all those horrible printer graphics. Like, that's embarrassing. I would not, like, I really don't want to spend my money on that much longer. I really don't. These are so bad. And then when you compare a mini GT car for, they are probably double the price. They're like $12 to $15, but they're that much better. Like this is a little bit embarrassing to me as a brand. And if I was Liberty Walk or Nissan, I'd be like, yo, what the F is going on with these graphics? Because they look bad. Like you can't even read that. I mean, it's so, so terrible. Like to me... I also have to say, okay, as a collector, I'm collecting these. I don't collect them for value, but I also don't want to be wasting my money. So if in the future people are like, no, that era of Hot Wheels was trash, or if these graphics, because they were printed on, start to crack or act in a way that we haven't seen from the pad printed tampos, us as collectors are really in trouble. Um, because almost every premium and even some RLC and other type of higher end cars um, from all kinds of brands, um, like the NASCAR stuff, Monster Truck, they're all starting to use this style of graphic, and it's going to be a problem if they don't age well. So uh, I'm really just crossing my fingers and hoping at this point that they do. Um, but in the meantime, I want them to get better because this is just unacceptable. It really is. Like the orange in there, it looks like you colored it with like a crayon or something. It's just, it's just not good. So the design... And the quality is okay. It's just the graphics are just not there. So um, this has a nice pin. I Hopefully I got out all my complaining. So it's got the nice pin that clicks on. It articulates um, pretty well. You got some room before it hits the cab. So let's go ahead. Let me see if I can do this without, without spilling the car. So we'll kind of put this over here. And then this, you kind of drive up, which doesn't... That's another thing about some of these. Like this isn't... I don't want to say it's not realistic, but the design, like the car doesn't even go straight up the ramp because the angle is too harsh. And then once you get it up, it doesn't like, it doesn't really get past there. So the good thing about it is that it stays there. It stays in place because it does have the wheel stops and it looks killer in there. That looks absolutely awesome. It really does. Got a cool way to display it. The back goes up. It just needs to be um just need to get those graphics really um that's that's my main complaint for those is the graphics but look how smooth that rolls listen to that ah oh, so nice the car's moving around a little bit in there but man is that cool we'll go ahead and pop that side so we can see it open the whole video okay so now that we got the graphics complaints out of the way, let's go ahead and open up the second story Lori and the Pantera. So the Pantera casting is pretty good. Um, I'm just waiting to see it in the Fast and the Furious line for the uh, Fast Five train scene Pantera. I think it was black with silver white writing. Um, that one I'm waiting for. But man, look at that truck. That looks so killer. Man, that looks good. I like that they also put the plastic... Uh, protector in here so that the car wouldn't move around um, front to back or side to side which is kind of nice so we'll have to figure out how to get that out so let's go ahead and pull the car out if i can maybe let's see how does this open so this looks like it has a little latch on it so you push it down and pull it out and then we'll try to no no okay there it goes okay let me pull this out of here so we can actually see the trailer 
So let's go ahead and look at the truck. Very nice. This to me has a better front end. Like I like that they put the, the gray around the headlights. Like again, it looks so much better than the missing, like the, the bug eyed look on that one. This looks more realistic. They are the printer style tampos, but I think the color background on these works a little better. Like there you can see all the different color, like basically the cyan, yellow, red, just mix of color. It looks trash up close but maybe like a 10 footer back here, it doesn't look as bad. It's definitely more visible on a white background than these. The golf logo, it's not bad. There's not too many artifacts in it, but the paint itself on the cab looks pretty good. Um, the black up top looks good. The golf on the back doesn't look hateful. Uh, the taillights don't look bad. So this is a good looking truck overall. Um, let's see, it's got some room in the front there it's got i mean this is really long are those two little humps there no so there's no stops really um on the top it's just gridded so the cars don't roll but they will so that's kind of a hiccup on it um, but again these aren't really for play these are for more display so if you put a couple cars on there um, they'll kind of stay in place anyways just because there's more of them uh, but in general this looks great so this is a plastic chassis it does have a Oddly enough, it has a screw right next to a rivet. Um, so I don't know. I guess it's screwing this plastic piece in, and then the metal cab is riveted. It's it's an interesting design. I don't know if I've ever seen that from Hot Wheels. We're seeing a lot of stuff I've never seen. The, the rivet right next to a screw is interesting, but the, even the chassis has a lot of detail. It's got the drive shaft, the rear end, the spare tire. It's got that nice Hot Wheels logo on it. Let's look at the door, so how that works. So that does pull down. So let's go ahead and try this again. So if you're, oh, there's a little bit of a design hiccup. So it goes like that. This one looks like it might be a little bit better, but no, still functionally, because these two big bumps are there, it still doesn't function. So I wish it was more function, functional, had more functionality. Um, again, it's hard to, at this price point of $15, or technically what, eight for the car, um, it is tough to get everything you want out of it, but I expect greatness from Hot Wheels because they're the best. They've been doing it the longest, um, basically. I mean, other brands were before them, but they've been doing this kind of stuff longer than anybody else, I think, at least in the, in the Americas. But I like it. As a release, I like it. It doesn't look terrible. I'm like trying to look at all the details through the camera and stuff. So let's go ahead and see. So we'll put the car, the car just has to go in there because you can't really drive it up the ramp. So here it kind of goes in there like that. It looks good though. I mean, they probably should have put a little bit of a lip on the edge because if not, the car just kind of slides out. So that, that kind of may need a little bit of an adjustment in the future. Um, but still, if it's just sitting there, like chilling in your collection on, this, on a shelf or something, spectacular. Like that will look so killer with some GT40s on it or a Porsche 917 or something like that. Just an excellent, like to me, the car itself, I don't really care about because it's not a real golf car as far as I know. What does that say? Di Tommaso. I can't even read what that says. The, the graphics are so terrible on it. I know that's the Di Tommaso logo. The 69 looks like, it looks like an Etch-A-Sketch. It's so bad. These graphics are so bad. Like, what is that right there? Like these little, like right here. What are these things right here? These like two little pieces of graphics. Are those supposed to be like, I don't even know what they're supposed to be. It looks terrible. It looks absolutely terrible. I don't know. These uh, these cars are definitely not. Is this open? Doesn't that look like it opens? Does it open? I don't think I've ever opened this Pantera before, so I don't think it does open. Paint is not good on this one. Um, let's look at the graphics. Pantera. It still has that same yellow artifacts that the other ones do. Um. The front looks better than the back, but still not great. Awesome casting. I think the wheel choice looks good. Um, the wheel in the front might be a little small compared to the back, 
But overall, as a release, I don't like this. I don't like that it's golf branded, and I don't like the quality of the tampos on it. So to me, I would buy this specifically for the hauler, which I basically did. So cool. Two good haulers, at least. Go ahead and put this one over here. Put the Pantera on top, but I will get some like GT40s and put those on there because that's really, I mean, it would just look awesome. So back this up a little. Okay, number three, number 58, the Mad Mike RX3 GT. So both of these uh, we have had before. The RX3, I think the first premium one was in the Japan Historics line, I think, in number one, right? I think it was purple in that one, and then it was in Japan Historics 2 in a orange color oddly uh it was bright orange i believe um but this looks killer um, the mad mike branding looks good this has a lot of branding rotiform uh ngk canon toyo with that old school toyo tire logo that is pretty sick but the mad lab logo looks pretty good um these are the printer style graphics you can see right there that that's actually not white or gray or yellow when you get close to them they are rainbow and they look like trash so Let's go ahead and check this one out. Let's look at the, the casting first. So this one does have three of the safety style screws with the triangles in the base, but it does have a metal base. That's because the majority of it up here is plastic. I don't know why they've been putting so much plastic in here. Um, maybe it's just to keep the car in place, but um, I like this casting. I think it looks good. It does look like a vintage uh, Japanese truck, maybe like an Isuzu or another brand like a Daihatsu. Is that a brand? Am I making that up? I don't think I'm making it up. Um, but the paint on this looks pretty good. Um, this one does have the pad printed. Uh, or no. Yeah, those are pad printed, it looks like. On the headlights, maybe? Because there's no artifact on those. I think those are actually pad printed. And then the ones in the bumper are the printer style. So it has a small chip or at least a missing part of the flat black paint, which I found on a couple other cars. There must be a problem with their flat black application because that happens on quite a few of them. Or if it's just so happens that the paint gets applied to like high scuff areas, like a lower lip there, but that's a little bit of a bummer. But as a release, this looks good. The black steel wheels look good. Um, the black back door looks good. Yeah, I mean, this is a really cool release. It is, especially if you're into Mazdas really nice okay again these all roll excellent um so let's look at this arc suit man look at those graphics those graphics belong in the garbage i see this is what i really don't understand is because why put them on the car if you can't even read them i mean none of these right here these bottom three that's not viewable that's not readable i can read i can read that it says mazda but everything else i can't even read so it's useless. Like, why put the detail on the car if you can't read it? It's absolutely useless. Even the three is not very good at all. In Hot Wheels, they can't even do their own logo. Look at that. Look how trash that is. And all this, like, it looks like Funfetti all over the car. I mean, these are terrible graphics. Absolutely horrible. So to me, um, this is not worth buying. The transporters are, but because of how bad these cars are. I mean, what's the point of buying a car if you can't even, if the details on it aren't even details? They're just gibberish. They're just graphic gibberish. Ugh, so frustrated with that. Like these look terrible too. They're offset. They're supposed to be up a little higher. So now they don't like go in the headlight buckets appropriately. Um, they're just bad. These graphics are going to be the death of this line in my opinion, because what is that? I don't know. I can't even read it. All the, all the, what is that? I don't know. There's like a piece of rubber in the paint. The quality and the tampos of Hot Wheels doing this kind of stuff is to me will be their downfall eventually because they have killer castings. They have good wheels, everything. I mean, they roll well, but what's the point? I'm, and I'm being serious. What's the point if you can't read what's on the car or if the car has headlights not in the right place or they look like funfetti? I mean, it's just to me, I don't want to spend my money on that. I really don't. And I spend an absolute ton on Hot Wheels and die casts yearly. And I don't know, the only way you can really speak and get them to change is to do it with your dollar and say like, I'm not buying it if it has this on it because it doesn't look good. So to me, the transporters in this line are definitely a win. 
the the three transporters are excellent the cars themselves are nice but these graphics man they gotta go seriously they look like garbage they're ruining these releases they don't like to me i i don't even put any collector value on this because it's junk i mean the casting is cool but it's like oh you have that you have that blah blah blah, blah car it's it's just trash i don't like that at all so I don't know. I, I hope I'm not complaining too much, but I feel like it's a valid it's a valid thing when you can't even read the branding on the car. So if Hot Wheels is paying for the branding and you're technically paying for the branding, I want to see the branding. You can just read it in general. I don't even like like that could say anything on it at this point. You wouldn't even know. But it looks I mean from here it looks okay. When you get up close, these ten footers, I'm telling you, they're not looking good. So all right, I know I, I blabbed a lot about the decal quality or the tampo quality, but I think it's it's warranted in some of these cases. But this, this looks pretty good. So I think the winner, in my opinion, for overall release is the Golf because you can use it for so many more cars in this Pantera. I'm um, in the Liberty Walk, too. You can put the um, S15 Liberty Walk in there. Um, you can have this one with it. Um, the Mad Mike, too. You can put the, what is it, the Mazda Repu in there. You can put the... Uh, Miata. I mean, he's had quite a few releases. So, and that new 787B is coming out uh, as a mainline, and that might look cool in the Mazda truck too, because it's all you know, rotary Mazda, all the good stuff, all the Mazda. <laughs> So, I don't know. Let me know what you think of this line. Um, if you found any of these, if you bought any of these. And please let me know if these graphics are bothering you as much as they're bothering me. Because it's just unacceptable at this point to be paying upwards of 7 to $8 for these and them to look like that. But it's Hot Wheels. I love them. They just got to get it together, if you know what I'm saying. So, I really appreciate you watching the same 64 Wheels. Like and subscribe, as always. I will have more team transport, more play sets, more, I, more everything. I just have so much stuff to unbox and get, get to you guys. It's just finding the time and editing and filming and all that good stuff. So I really appreciate you watching either way and sticking with me um, through these videos. I've posted a lot recently, and like I said, I will have more to come. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Boop, <laughs> boop,